Hello students, I am Akhilesh Kumar Shivasto from ABS Engineering College. In the series of data structure lectures, we will discuss today about the insertion sort. We already have discussed about the bubble sort and the selection sort in the previous lectures of the sorting. Today we will discuss another sorting technique which is a order of n square sorting technique. Bubble selection and insertion sorts, all these are the brute force approach sorting techniques wherein the effort required, required is order of n square. So the outline of today's lecture will be, will be seeing what the insertion sort is, how we perform the insertion sort. Then we will see the analysis of the bubble sort, we will see the analysis of the selection sort and then we will make a comparison between insertion selection and the bubble sort and we will find out which among these three is the best one. So let us understand the sorting first. Let us say there is a table and in this table, let us say there is a table and in this table there are many elements. There are many records here. Each of these records are randomly written, randomly arranged with respect to every record there are various fields but in this field one of the field is selected as the key this key will have the unique value unique means it is it cannot be duplicated for example if this is the student's roll number it cannot be duplicated every student will have a unique roll number an employee id or in any organization that will also be unique so the aadhaar number for example that is unique so that is the key value now we need to arrange these records according to the key values, then we will require the sorting. Let us understand the insertion sort. What happens in the insertion sort? We will consider that we have an array which contains the elements. We will divide this array into two parts. One of the part will contain the sorted elements and the another part will, require, will have the unsorted elements. We will pick one element from the unsorted element at a time and will insert that in the sorted part. So every time one element will be taken from this unsorted part and that will be inserted in the sorted part. So this is done one by one. Now let us say we have this array 10, 20, 30, 40 and 15. In this you can see that this part is sorted and the unsorted part contains only one element that is 15. In case we have to insert this 15 in the upper part which is having the sorted elements then you will first have to find out the position of the element. It means where in this array should this element be inserted. So the first operation will be finding the position where it should be inserted. So we will have to perform the search and then once you have found the position where it should be inserted you will have to insert this element. For example, when you will find this position, this will be the position where this element needs to be inserted. Now, if you have found the position, this element will be inserted here requiring that all the elements should be shifted one step below. It means if you have to insert this 15, before the insertion, the element 20 should come here, element 30 should come here and element 40 should come here. So at a time you will be shifting only one element at a time. Okay? The insertion process has also been explained which says that the last element should be shifted first and then the second last element should be shifted and then the third last element should be shifted and so on and so forth. And finally when you have a place for insertion of 15, 15 can be inserted here. So the two step process is required here, one is that you find out or search the space where it should be inserted and the second thing is that you insert the element requiring that the elements should be shifted one step below. Now there are two operations, you require order of n shifting in case you have to insert the element at any random position on an average th there will be order of n shiftings here. So order of n time is required for searching and order of n time will be required for shifting of the items as well. 
we want that these two things should be done together so that to save some time when we are finding when we are finding out the position of the element where it should be inserted along with that you perform the shifting also so we should perform the searching and the shifting of the elements hand in hand together now suppose you have to perform the insertion sort of these elements wherein initially we have considered that the sorted part contains a single element only that is 80 and we have many elements below this which are unsorted so we will pick one element from the unsorted part let's say the indexes we have marked here as 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 we are picking one element from this that is the second element this element and we will try to insert this element in the sorted array so obviously the position of the sorted element in the sorted array 50 should come here and 80 should come below this. So now this is the sorted part and the unsorted part will now contain the element like this. Now you pick another element from the sorted part, unsorted part and insert this in the sorted part. So 60 should be coming at the place of 80 and consequently 80 will be shifted one step below. So after this the sorted part will contain these elements 50, 60 and 80 and the unsorted part will contain 30, 40 and 20. And then we have a 30 to be inserted in the unsorted part. So this should be inserted here. So when you will insert this 30 in this array, so the elements will be shifted one step down and sorted array contains four elements. However, the unsorted now contains two elements only. Pick another element from the unsorted part that is 40 and insert that in the sorted part. 40 should come at the place of 50. So the elements 50 onwards should be shifted one step down. So 30, 40, 50, 60 and 80 are the elements in the sorted part now and the unsorted part contains only a single element. Pick the last element from this unsorted part and insert that in the sorted part. So since the 20's position should be at the place of 30, so 20 is inserted here and other all other elements will be shifted one step down. So this is the sorted array. Now what do you see, what do you have uh, to see here that here we are performing 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 insertions. In case we had 6 elements, we are performing 5 insertions. In case we have n elements, we will be performing n minus 1 insertions. If we consider that every insertion is taking place in one iteration, then the total number of iterations that you have to perform here are n minus 1. Now, this is the result of the previous question wherein you see that the size of the sorted array is growing by one in each of the iteration. Now suppose we have to write the algorithm for this insertion. For writing the algorithm uh, for this insertion, let us consider that we are performing the last iteration only. In the last iteration, let us say this is the element which is required to be inserted. So let us consider that this element is k. This element needs to be inserted in the upper part. For insertion of this element, you need to make the comparisons and the shiftings. So let us say we will start the comparison from this place. Okay. So j is equals to i minus 1. This is the place from which I will be making the comparison. If this element, aj element, will be larger than the k element which is to be inserted, we will shift the jth element one step down. Okay? So I have compared this like while aj is greater than k element, then I will be shifting this aj element to aj plus 1. Obviously, if, if this is the at and this needs to be shifted down, this should come here. So if this position is 5, this position will be 6. 
तो फिफ्थ एलिमेंट नीड्स टू बी मेड एज सिक्स एलिमेंट सो दैट्स वाई ए जे एलिमेंट हैज बिन मेड एज ए जे प्लस वन वंस दिस शिफ्टिंग हैज डन वी विल नाउ मूव टू दिस पोजिशन वन स्टेप बैक सो दैट मीन्स यू नीड टू डू जे इक्वल्स टू जे माइनस वन एंड अगेन द कंपेरिजन विल बी मेड सो इफ यू मेक अ कंपेरिजन बिटवीन ए जे एलिमेंट एंड द के एलिमेंट विच इज थर्टी फाइव हेयर इन दिस केस सिक्सटी अगेन इज लार्जर दैन थर्टी फाइव सो दिस विल बी शिफ्टेड वन स्टेप डाउन सो एटी हैज कम हेयर सिक्सटी हैज कम हेयर एंड देन जे विल बी डिक्रीमेंटेड बाई वन जे विल कम हेयर दिस एलिमेंट इज ऑल्सो लार्जर दैन द के दैट इज थर्टी फाइव सो दिस विल बी शिफ्टेड वन स्टेप डाउन अगेन जे विल बी डिक्रीमेंटेड बाई वन जे कम्स हेयर नाउ इफ थर्टी फाइव इज कंपेयर विद दिस एलिमेंट दिस एलिमेंट इज अगेन लार्जर सो दिस विल अगेन बी शिफ्टेड वन स्टेप डाउन एंड जे विल बी डिक्रीमेंटेड बाई वन सो दिस इज द करेंट पोजिशन ऑफ द जे नाउ दिस एलिमेंट थर्टी इज नॉट लार्जर दैन दिस के सो इन दिस केस we will say that we have found the position where k should be inserted this condition has failed that means the loop has to be terminated so the loop terminates and after the termination of the loop i will insert this k at not j index but j plus 1 index so k element is getting inserted here whereas j was here so a j plus 1 will be equals to this k now once this insertion has taken place let's take one more example wherein the this loop condition is not sufficient for example you have to insert not 35 but 25 in case you have to insert this 25 then every other thing is fine but when the comparison is made between this 30 means the first element and 25 this will also be larger than 25 in that case this element also needs to be shifted one step down 30 comes here and then where j is decremented by 1 j comes to the zero index here we are considering that the indexes are starting from 1 it means index number 0 is an invalid index for us in case we have reached to the invalid index we cannot go for the comparison so comparison has to stop here so in case j is greater than or equal to 1 and aj is greater than k it means j is greater than or equal to 1 means the comparisons are possible if j has been reduced to 0 further comparison will not be possible we will have to stop there so this is the loop condition where it has to terminate let's say j has become 0 and the loop has terminated j is 0 so in that case also the insertion is required to take place at one index so that's why aj plus 1 is equals to k it means a0 plus 1 is equals to k now this is only the last iteration we have discussed that a total of n minus 1 iterations are required to be performed so it means that this kind of the operation is required to be performed for n minus 1 time so let's enclose everything written here in a loop because every repeated thing should come in the loop here we are saying that the loop counter is starting from 1 no let's take it at 2 because the first element which will be inserted will be the second index element so the loop counter starts from 2 and it goes up to n saying that the first element which is required to be inserted is the second index element and then the third index element will be inserted and so on so forth the last element which will be inserted will be the nth index element so this completes the insertion sort algorithm you can see that i have written is a fresh this outer loop is telling you the number of iterations and this process is telling you that which element to be inserted okay the rest of the things remain same this actually is telling you the number of iteration and then this loop is telling you or this entire thing is telling you the shifting and placing of item in this sorted array now what is the effort required here total number of iterations are n minus 1 let's come back to this problem in case we are saying that this is the first iteration 
the comparison and shifting will require one effort or order of one effort in the order of two for the second in the order of three for the third elements inserted insert, uh, insertion for the fourth element order of four it means the number of comparisons or the effort is increasing in every iteration here you can say that the effort in the first iteration if you count this this statement is compulsory this statement is compulsory this is a loop wherein we are making this and this and finally this so there are five statements which are compulsory here a five statement which is actually required in compulsion for the insertion of the item so in the first iteration we may require five in the second iteration we may require two into five in the third iteration we may require three into five and so on and so forth in the n minus first iteration you will require n minus one into five total effort if you sum all these since 5 is common so you can take it as 5 into 1 plus 2 plus 3 and so on so forth n minus 1 this is summation n minus 1 which can be written as n into n plus 1 divided by 2 so 5 by 2 into n into n plus 1 so this is the total effort required you can write it as 5 by 2 into n square plus n here we have a degree 2 polynomial and degree 1 polynomial we write the complexity with respect to the highest degree polynomial that is n square so the complexity of this algorithm will be written in the terms of n square but we have we are not decided yet about the notation in which this complexity should be written let's take uh, uh, a special case wherein the elements given to you are already sorted in case the elements to given to you are already sorted in that case when you will compare this element with the above element these this will say that 20 is already at its appropriate position so you do not need any shifting then if you will compare this element with the above element this also says that element number 30 is already at the right place similarly with the 40 is already at the right place 50 is already at the right place 60 is already at the right place so every element which is required to be inserted is already there at the right place so no need of shiftings so it means in the comparison it means this comparison always fails in such situation okay so we have to perform all the iterations but in every iteration i require only one comparison to be made although there are more efforts which are compulsory statements you can see that there are some of the compulsory statements here this is compulsory and this is compulsory statement so that's why i writing i am writing 1 plus 2 so this is required so three effort in every iteration in case we have n minus 1 iteration the total effort required is 3 into n minus 1 so this is the best case which can be written in omega notation so omega n is the best case time complexity whereas this complexity in which we had to perform all the iterations and in all the iterations we have gone up to the first position for insertion of the item will be the worst case and the worst case time complexity can be written as order of n square what about the space complexity here you can see that you are taking three extra variable from your side one is i one is j and another one is k so three are the extra variables that you are taking from your side so the space function is three and space complexity can be written as theta one no matter what uh, how big your size of the array is you will require only these three variables and no more so the best case says that yes there will be three spaces required so the space complexity will be theta 1 similar in the worst case also you require only three spaces so there is only one case for the space but there are may, many cases or there may be more than one case possible for the time so the time function for the best case would be 3 into n minus 1 which can be written as omega of n in the worst case when you have to perform all the iterations 
and in each of the iterations the number of uh, comparisons is equal to the number of iteration. So, the total time function here would be 5 into n into n plus 1 5 by 2 into n into n plus 1 n minus 1 not n plus 1 this will be n into n minus 1. So, this will be equals to 5 by 2 into n square by 2 minus n by 2 which can be written as big O n square because n square is a higher degree term than the m. Now, let us make a comparison between the bubble selection and the inversion sort. So, first let us see how the bubble sort process goes. The bubble in the bubble sort process we compare the first two elements and in case the first element is larger we make an exchange between this these two here 50 is larger than 30. So, we have exchanged them. Then we make a comparison between 50 and 45 since 50 is larger than 45. So, they are getting exchanged. Now, we make a comparison between 50 and 10 third and the fourth element since this element is larger and this element is smaller. So, we exchange them. Now, we make a comparison between 15 and 50 and 15. This 50 is larger and 15 is smaller. So, we exchange them and then we make a comparison between 50 and 40. Since this 50 is larger than 40, so we exchange them. Final outcome of the first iteration is this, wherein you fix up the last element and the last element is the largest one. How many comparisons you have actually made? You have made one comparison, 2, 3, 4 and 5 in case you had 6 elements. So, you have made 6 compare sorry 5 comparisons in case you have 6 element. In the next iteration what you will do? You will you will take one less comparison than the previous. So, in the first iteration you have made n minus 1 comparison. Along with this you have made exchanges and how many exchanges are there? There are n minus 1 exchanges also if you assume that exchange took place after every comparison. So, a total of this much effort will be required n minus 1 exchanges along with this 3 comparisons uh, uh, n minus 1 comparisons and then followed by the exchange. So, in every comparison we are making the exchange. Now, in the second iteration you made one less comparison because you have fixed this element 50. So, you are making the comparison up to only this point. So, one less comparison was made in the second iteration. So, the total number of comparisons are n minus 2 into 3. In the next iteration, you require even one less comparison. So, in the next iteration, you require n minus 3 into 3 effort and so on so forth. In each of the iteration, this number of comparison is getting down. In the last iteration, you will require only one comparison. You can see that you require only one comparison to be made. In case you require only one comparison, then followed by the exchange, this quantity would be 1 minus 1 into 3. So, the total effort required in the bubble sort process, the total effort required in the bubble sort process can be found like a space function and the time function. We have already computed the time function here. Let us sum all these this is n minus 1 into 3 plus n minus 2 into 3 plus and so on so forth 1 into 3. If you take 3 common here, this will be n minus 1 plus n minus 2 and so on so forth up to 1. And then this quantity can be reversed like this this is summation n minus 1. The value of summation n minus 1 is n into n minus 1 by 2. So, this is 3 by 2 into n into n minus 1. So, the time function here is 3 by 2 into n into n minus 1 or you can write it as 3 by 2 into n square minus n. Hence, the time complexity can be written as order of n square. In the last lecture, we have seen that there is a special case also possible here, wherein the elements are already sorted. In that case, you require 
very less effort. Now, what is the space function for this? If this is the algorithm for the bubble sort, i, j are the two variables you are taking from your side. And in case you consider that exchange also requires a third variable. So, a total of three extra variables, extra space is required here. So, the space function is 3 and space complexity can be written as theta 1 because in each of the case you will require only 3 variables and not more than 3 variables. Now, the special case for the bubble sort, in case the elements are already sorted, when you perform the first iteration, no exchange would be required. If you compare the second and the third element, no exchange is required. If you compare the third and the fourth element, no exchange required. If you compare fourth and fifth element, no exchange required. If you compare fifth and the sixth element, no exchange required. So, in case no exchange is required, in the subsequent iterations also, there will be no exchange required. So, a total of n minus 1 comparisons took place, you need not do other iterations, you have to stop, you will have to stop the bubble sort here itself saying that the elements are sorted, no need of performing the future steps. So, n minus 1 comparisons, but no exchange. So, in case no exchange is required, I can write the time complexity as omega n minus 1 and the space complexity remains same, you can see that the algorithm is same only, we have not made any change in the algorithm. Yes. To stop our algorithm at this point, we need to add extra conditions. Means you can take a flag here, let us say the flag is 1, saying that the iteration has to be performed. Okay. Now, once you enter this loop, let us make this flag as 0 and the outer loop will run only if add extra condition here that i is 1, flag is 1. In case the flag is 1, then only the outer loop will run. It means the outer loop is telling you the iteration. So, outer loop will run only if this flag is 1. And then, when the flag is 1, you have entered this, you have made this flag to 0. In case we do not enter the exchange, flag will remain 0 and the outer loop next time will not be performed. So, after the exchange, set this flag to 1 saying that one exchange has taken place. In case no exchange took place, the flag will remain 0 and we will not be coming to back to the algorithm or we will not be performing the next iteration and we will stop the operation there itself. Now, what about the selection sort process? What happens in the selection sort? You set the first element as minimum. Then you find if 30, 30 is less than minimum. Yes, 30 is less than minimum. So, minimum is set at this element. Then you find out if 50 is less than minimum, 45 is less than minimum. Obviously, 45 is not less than minimum. So, minimum will stay here. Next, you compare if this 10 is less than minimum. Yes, this 10 is less than minimum. So, minimum comes at the position of 10. And then you compare this 15. 15 is not less than minimum. So, it stays here. And then if you compare this 40, this, is, this will remain here. What you will do? You will exchange this with the first element. So, this is the first iteration. In the second iteration, you will do similar with the second one, you will find second minimum, then the third minimum, then the fourth minimum and then the fifth minimum. So, the total effort number of iterations here are n minus 1. In the first iteration, you require n minus 1 comparisons and after this, you need three statements for the exchange of the minimum with the first element and so on so forth. Here also, if you will compare that the, in each of the iterations, the comparisons are reducing. If you will sum all these, this will again come out to n square. But since there is no special case for the selection sort, the complexity will always remain as theta of n square. Space complexity will be theta 1 because you require 3 extra variables for, in case 4, four extra variable here because minimum is the extra required here. Now, there is no special case. Let us come to the summary. The bubble sort, selection sort, insertion sort all require theta n square, uh, theta of n square time in average case. But in case the numbers are sorted, then we get a better time complexity in case of the bubble and the insertion sort.
because we can stop our operation early in the bubble sort and in the insertion sort even though the iterations are performed n minus 1, but we do not require that much effort, we require less effort. The worst case of these algorithms are big O n square. A space remains the same for all these algorithms, means bubble selection and insertion sorts, they are theta 1. Thank you.